Today in this video, I'm going to share with you how to back up your photos and videos from an SD card, a CF Express card, a micro SD card to an external hard drive using your iPhone. But first, some of you right now may be thinking, why? Like, why would anyone ever want to do this when you could just bring a laptop with you, connect an SD card, connect a card reader, connect an external drive and just transfer files that way? Well, that's all fine and good. As a matter of fact, that is still the fastest and easiest way to be backing up your data when traveling. But the thing is, not everyone wants to travel with a laptop or has the ability to travel with a laptop because laptops are kind of bulky and clunky. They're heavy. And not everyone wants to be carrying one around with them in a camera bag, especially when we have these, especially when we have phones that can do pretty much everything a laptop can do. Let's take a look at the different things that you're going to need. Okay, first, of course, you're going to need an iPhone. This is an iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max here. Now, you don't need like the latest and greatest iPhone. Any iPhone will do. Next thing you're going to need is this special adapter made by Apple. This is what they call a camera adapter. This has a USB-A port here and a lightning port and a lightning input over here. And we connect this to the phone and then connect some other things here, which we'll get into in just a second. Next item you're going to need is some kind of dongle. This is one that is made by Anchor, a USB-C dongle. Nothing particularly special about this one other than it has uh, an integrated SD card slot, a micro SD card slot, uh, two USB-A ports and two USB-C ports. Next is a USB-C to A adapter. This is just a, a cheap little adapter that I picked up on Amazon. And by the way, I'll be linking to all this stuff, you know, down below in the description so you can check them out. Next, we're going to need some power. So this is a power bank here made by Rav Power. Now, you know, the brand of power bank or capacity of power bank, you know, isn't particularly important. But what I do think is important is the is the number of outputs. This one here has three USB A outputs on it, uh, which is actually one more than necessary for how we're going to be configuring this. But uh, it's good to have two, which, you know, you'll see why in just a second. And then finally, to connect everything, we're going to need a few cables. So let's connect everything and see how this works. So again, this is a camera adapter made by Apple, and it has USB-A here and a lightning input here, and then the lightning connection here for the phone. Now, I wish Apple made a version of this that had USB-C instead of A, but, well, I wish the phone itself just had USB-C, but... You know, for now, this is what we need. Now, in order to connect this dongle here, which is a USB-C dongle to the adapter, we're going to need this little guy. So this just goes into the USB-A port like so, and then we connect the dongle to that. Now, in order for this dongle to work, it needs power. And unfortunately, the phone does not provide enough power to be powering this thing. So this is part of the reason why we need a power bank like this. So I'm going to plug this into... Uh, one of the USB-A ports here, and then connect this to the port that says PD, uh, which is short for power delivery. And now we can see there's a little white light here on the dongle that is uh, come on, which shows that we're now getting power and everything is uh, everything's ready to go here. And while we're talking about power, now this is purely optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is something that you can do. And this is part of the reason why I said that two USB-A ports on your uh, power bank is a good idea because we can use the additional lightning port on the adapter here to be powering the phone when we plug it in. And then we have our media. So this is the, uh, the SD card here. And I'm going to insert this over here, plug that in. And now we need to connect the SSD drive. So just gonna plug this in over here. And there we go. So we have the dongle with the SD card, the SSD drive connected. We are providing power to the dongle and we are connected to the camera adapter. So now all we need to do is connect the phone. Now, just to confirm up here on the top right, you can see that I am receiving power here on the phone. The phone is charging while I'm doing this. So I'm providing power to both the phone and the dongle. Next step is to open the iOS files app, which comes with the operating system. And then here in the location list, you can see we have extreme SSD two terabyte. That is the SanDisk SSD drive. And then we have EOS digital here. That is the SD card. Okay. So I want to transfer everything from the SD card to the SSD drive. And to do that, we just tap on the SD card. Then, uh, and again, this is all just Canon stuff, but this folder here contains all the photos and videos. So I'm going to press and hold on that. I'm going to tap copy. 
and then go back to browse, go to the SD card, which is empty. That's good. Press and hold and then tap paste. And then if we tap on the progress indicator, we get uh, confirmation here that data is being copied from the SD card to the SSD drive. And we can see that, uh, that the, uh, that the app thinks it's going to take approximately three hours and 17 minutes in order to be copying all 256 gigabytes from this 256 gigabyte SD card to the SSD drive. Now, when it comes to speed, yeah, this is, this is not fast. I mean, this is pretty slow. This is somewhere around maybe a little bit faster than one gigabyte per minute is about what you can expect to get. And for context, I tried this same test here using the dongle with a laptop and there that took about an hour to do. Then I took the dongle out of the equation, plus plug the SSD and the SD card directly into my MacBook Pro and tried it that way. And then I got everything transferred over and copied over in about 20 minutes. So if speed is important, then yeah, a laptop is definitely going to, to handle this better and is going to do it faster than this. This is going to take uh, like upwards of three times as long, unfortunately. The other limitation to be aware of here is that data, unfortunately, cannot be merged. Like, you know, if you were to say, you know, back up an SD card and then put the SD card back in your camera, take a few more photos, put the SD card back in and then try to do another backup. Well, the operating system here uh, is not sophisticated enough to recognize the difference between the two and only transfer the new stuff. You would have to go in and you know, manually transfer those files yourself using the app here if that's what you want to do. Or you could just delete the backup that you backed up before to the SSD drive and then just recopy everything again. Now, what about the CF Express card? How do we copy data off of this? Well, if you already have a CF Express card, I would imagine you probably have some kind of reader like this one. So I'm just going to put this in the reader and this has a USB-C interface on it. This uh, dongle here, unfortunately, uh, only has two USB-C ports on it and both of them are being occupied at the moment. One is the SSD and one is uh, power. So if you happen to find a dongle that has three USB-C ports on it, that could actually be better. All right, so now I just plug the card reader into here and let's push all of this stuff over, go back to the phone, plug this back in again. And if we go back to the files app, we can see, yep, EOS Digital, that is the CF Express Type B card here. Now it's named the same as the SD card, but don't let that throw you off. That's again, that's just Canon formatting. It is definitely reading the CF Express Type B card. And now we can transfer data just the same from the CF Express Type B to the SSD drive. Now, one of the interesting things about this files app, and some of you may have already noticed this, in the locations list, you will see that there are options here for iCloud Drive, Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. Now, I'm seeing Dropbox, Drive, and OneDrive because I have those applications downloaded and installed from the App Store. So if you don't see these options and you want to use these options, then you can download those apps and then they will appear here. And what this means is that it is technically possible then to copy data from a card, not only to an external hard drive, but also to one of these cloud hosting providers as well. Hey, this is me in the future. I'm jumping in here because I realized after recording this video that it would be helpful to do a little more testing of these cloud options to see if these actually work, to see if these are viable solutions for backing up SD card data to the cloud, because that would appear to be a more ideal solution, because then all photos and videos are up in the cloud and not on a removable drive that's in your luggage or on your person or whatever. Well, there's good news and bad news. And let's begin with the latter. Google Drive, unfortunately, does not allow files to be copied and pasted into Google Drive. I don't know why, if it's an API thing, if it's an Android versus iOS thing, I don't know. But the other three cloud services, iCloud, Dropbox, and OneDrive do work. They allow files and folders to be pasted into their applications. But unfortunately, I discovered that all three of these cloud apps seem to struggle with folders containing a bunch of photos and videos in them. Like if we were to do the same thing of, you know, copying the root folder on an SD card and then trying to paste that entire folder into Dropbox, OneDrive, or iCloud, I don't think these apps were engineered for that use case. Like they behave really erratically. They start doing weird things. And it's also worth pointing out that in order for your photos and videos to be copied from the SD card up into the cloud, 
Well, you have to have a fast internet connection, and that would be a fast Wi-Fi connection or a fast like 5G connection, something like that, which oftentimes is easier said than done, especially with Wi-Fi, because I know from experience, and I'm sure many of you uh, watching this video have probably experienced this as well, a lot of times in like Airbnbs and hotels, they have decent Wi-Fi, like the downstream is good, but the upstream is terrible. Like the upload speeds are awful. And that's because a lot of times uh, internet service providers put a clamp on upstream and it's, it's like sometimes just impossible to get data uh, up. Uh, onto a server or into the cloud. And I actually tested this with a Google Fiber connection, which provides plenty of bandwidth for upload. But even then it was pretty slow, which you know, kind of tells me that uploading large amounts of data from an SD card to one of these cloud service providers through the phone is probably not a good viable option. I think it's still preferable to be using some type of external media. So uh, not the most elegant solution in the world, that's for sure, because we have to use like a couple of adapters and, uh, and a dongle and cables and a power bank. Maybe in the future, some of this will be simplified when the iPhone switches from uh, lightning to USB-C. I really hope that's the case at some point, because I would love to just plug this dongle just directly into the phone. That would be fantastic. But for now, this works and it provides a way to back up data from cards to an external drive and to the cloud as well if you you know have a fast enough internet connection without having to bring a laptop with you. Anyway, hope this video was helpful. If it was, please take a moment and give it a thumbs up down below. And while you're down there, check out the description for links to everything that I talked about in this video. That's it for me. I will see you next time.